applause. I was never a very good student. I, I worked hard. I, I, I was never a, a very meritorious student or what you would say. I was never that. Anyway, uh, respected uh, Ramesh Mishra ji, respected uh, Paul ji, respected uh, uh, Akhlesh ji, uh, the teachers of the school here, and Rajesh Mishra ji, and uh, my young friends. Let me start by straight away apologizing for having this session with you on the eve of the day when you are about to leave for the holy celebrations. I can understand most of you must have felt yeah, this is you must be engaged in packing and all I am told from tomorrow you will be having a break of about 15-16 days, a holy break and I am sure all of you must be looking forward to meeting your parents, your friends, your brothers, sisters. Uh, but I just came today from Delhi and uh, I have been missing this opportunity to interact with you people for quite some time. So I thought I must come today, otherwise I'll miss this time again. So that's how I'm here. I requested uh, Ramesh ji yesterday morning that I'll be coming here. So can we have a session? And he was gracious enough to immediately accept my request and that's how we are here. So excuse me for this inconvenience on the eve of your holidays, but I will compensate that by trying to make it interesting. I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to lecture you on, you know, anything which is uh, very, uh, very high principled or, uh, I won't do that. While coming to this place, I thought, what should I tell you? Whatever I'm going to tell you, I have tried to, uh, I'm just a like to listen from a speaker like me here. If I would have been seated there, what would I have expected him to say? Or what would I have loved to hear from him? So based on that, I thought I'll just uh, prepare, I will just collect my thoughts and then tell you. So basically, I'll just tell you briefly about my life history. It is not because uh, uh, you, you may or may not know, but just with a view for you to relate with me. I'm just one among you. I'll tell you how. So I'll just briefly touch upon my life history and then I will touch upon you as a student. What are the challenges, what you should focus upon, whatever I think might help you. And also, finally, on the life ahead. What are the challenges? After all, you, some of you are old enough, you are transitioning into, from childhood to adulthood. And adulthood is completely different. So what will be the challenges ahead? So I'll briefly try to touch upon those. And I, I will, and then of course I will be very happy if you have some queries or some kind of you know doubts which you need to clarify uh, I will try to do that there is a reason why I am speaking here in English I know at times our uh, understanding whatever we get from the speaker sometimes gets limited because of the you know some bit of a gap in the language, but this is deliberate. I will tell you one thing before I, I start. Language uh, is important and which is the language it is not important. Language is just a medium to communicate and you communicate whichever language you feel comfortable you communicate. But particularly I have seen in this part of the country, in Bihar, 
in mostly in Uttar Pradesh, Hindi belt, there is a reluctance, there is a hesitation among students to, uh, you know, to learn English or to express themselves in English. With a result, I have seen when I have interacted with even young IAS professionals and IPS professionals, I have realized they are the smartest of the people. But at times I have felt that they are just not able to express themselves. There is a limitation of language. You know, so my first point, key point here would be that try to get yourself as conversant in English as possible. This is important, I'm telling you. If you want to succeed in life, this is important. Because you will find this is one language which is a kind of lingua franca to the whole world. This will open doors for you to the whole world. Otherwise, you'll miss something. You may achieve academically everything. You can go to the top of your career. But you'll miss something if you are not able to express yourself in the language in which the world talks. At least a large part of the world talks because uh, uh, I'll come later on why that is important. So let me start from my life history. So as uh, told by Gopalji in the introduction and also touched upon by uh, Palji, uh, I belong to this place, this area. I was born in a village in Madhepura district under Kumarkhand block, a village called Israin way back in 1959. My early childhood was spent here in this area. I used to go to a school from class 2 onwards to a school called Shagdam Smarak Madhimik Vidyalaya. It is not very far away from, uh, if I don't know how many of you are quite familiar with this area, but it is somewhere in Madhubani. It is not very far away inside. And I recently, during my last visit, I just saw it from outside and I got completely disappointed. Uh, this is, that school I found is a completely bad state of disrepair in a dilapidated condition. Some new building have come up, but whatever, I had that mental image of that school as a beautiful place where I used to go and used to play around in the field and all, but I found that that was in a very bad state of uh, disrepair. So I thought someday I'll take that up with the district administration and see if something, that school is a government school, so something could be done about that. So later on, when my father got transferred to Kishanganj, I got educated till about class seven in that Jagannath Smarak Madhmik Vidyalaya. Uh, Jagdam Smarak here and Jagannath there. Both of them government school, certainly not like this. A very, very ordinary kind of school where I went. And then fortunately I was lucky uh, I prepared for that and I was extremely lucky. I got selected in Netherheart admission test and that's how I landed in Netherheart school. And uh, by the time I had gone there in 1970, Ramesh and both of his friends, they had already left. They were from the first batch and first batch means 1954 and I went there in 1970. So I was quite young at least, straight away 16 years younger to them. Nitharhat, uh, I must tell you, uh, uh, this, this is a school, but school is, there are so many schools. Um, you know, uh, one thing which marked uh, Nitharhat different than rest of the schools, even in the country, was the quality of teachers that we had. So we were extremely lucky to have the best of the teachers there who really knew their subject and were so kind, so enthusiastic about telling uh, about the subject, uh, so keen to make sure that students learn the thing, you know, so that was one thing, but uh, that apart that you can get at many places and, you know, I'm sure uh, here also I'm told the faculty is so good, so that's there, so Netarhat was there, but one important thing which completely distinguishes Netarhat from the rest of the ilk is, you know, some of the values. And uh, my friends, at this stage of life, maybe you may not be able to appreciate the importance of the 
some of the core <laughs> values of human being which all of us should have so that values was inculcated in us you know at that young age of say from the age of 10 11 years to another next 6 7 years doing everything with your own you know and no no hesitation in doing any kind of manual work cleaning your own utensils respect for the elders compassion for the you know fellow human beings compassion for empathy with the you know people who do manual job you know that kind of a thing and i tell you that has stuck with us with all of us throughout our life we are very very clear about that so that is one thing which uh, really uh, you know distinguishes a school which we we are lacking in most of the schools are, are you all with me so far you think i should uh, be uh, you should try to speak in hindi so that you can get the essence of it more clearly okay great great very good i'm gradually getting energy from you you know that is the advantage of being in the young company a old man i mean i'm not that old i mean in the company they will immediately chastise me but yes i mean i am now 63 so a person at 63 years of age requires that energy which i see in your eyes so uh, uh, you know uh, i i have those values the ethical values the moral values are very important education is nothing if you score 100% marks in a subject i think that may not be good enough unless and until you are a good human being so my dear friends try to be a good human beings coming back to netar heart so Uh, we we finished netar heart in 1977 and i moved to patna science college now here i'll tell you one thing in life it is very important and that is for all of you to be focused on what you want to achieve this is very important you must know what you want to achieve and be focused and i'll tell you later what when i in the part 2 when what what i actually mean by being focused on that so in netar heart at that point of time after matriculation most of us used to decide whether we have to go to for the engineering or go for the medical or go for the the general line so to say now well, this was very very clear at that point of time jobs were very less so these were the main kind of a you know the areas where the student used to get immediately gets to to if you are going towards the iits and all it is understood that you will become an engineer it was not a very frequent route at that point of time to go to iit and then come to civil services and if you are going for a medical you are going to become a doctor that was also very clear and if you are both coming to uh, uh, for a general uh, um, you know graduation uh, basically it is understood that you will be preparing for civil services or other such general exam so i was focused i knew that what i want to be i mean that was at least my desire and i wanted to pursue that so that's how irrespective of any of my colleagues or my peer group doing any kind of attempt for iit or anything i did not do anything i came to patna science college and did my physics honors and then moved to delhi and did my msc in physics so till that point the only point was that yes i have to do my post graduation and appear for the civil services and i did that and uh, in the in the finally i i was able to uh, you know clear the civil services and i landed in the indian police service in 1984 batch and there is a cadre system so i was allotted assam cadre not meghalaya assam meghalaya is a joint cadre so mostly i was in assam and uh, from 1984 to 1991 i served in assam later on i moved to on deputation to government of india i served in intelligence bureau for quite long time i got posted at different places in the country and also abroad and then finally i had the opportunity to head the organization for 3 years 
And then after retirement, I became, uh, I was appointed by the president through a warrant as vigilance commissioner in the Central Vigilance Commission. In my present job, uh, basically the Central Vigilance Commission, I'll just briefly explain it to you. It is an apex organization. Uh, it's the apex uh, anti-corruption watchdog body, which basically uh, acts as a watchdog body for all the government functionaries in government of India and also public sector undertakings and public sector banks, etc. Uh, it has under its wing, as the investigating wing, the Central Bureau of Investigation, CBI. So all corruption related cases uh, comes under the supervision of the commission. And to that extent, the CBI comes under supervision of the commission. Similarly, the Enforcement Directorate, which is a completely a, a financial investigation unit, they come under the commission's supervision as far as the corruption-related cases are concerned. All the officers in CBI, except the director, are appointed uh, by a committee having CBC and VC as members and some other people and the ED director and all the officers in the ED get appointed by a committee again by the same committee uh, with CBC and VCs and some other members as committee. So this is so this is and all complaints of uh, all kinds of complaints people are free to write to us in all the public sector organization, government ministries, departments, we have the post of CVOs, Central Vigilance Officers. So they come under the, uh, the they, they are our extended hand. So they do the investigation part as far as the that particular department or public sector undertakings are concerned. So that's how the commission works. So that's all. So I just thought I must explain it to you for your own knowledge. Now, the second part of the thing, which is important and which is, I think you, you should be interested in that. So you as a students, now, some of you would be, I think, uh, some of you must already be appearing in the class 12 or class 10 exam, which may not be here. And uh, some of you would be preparing for that exam uh, in near future, you'll be appearing one year hence, two year hence. Now, writing an exam is a completely different skill. So, you please always keep this in mind. Your, your aim is to learn the thing, you keep learning. But while you are preparing for an exam, while you are writing an exam, it is only the test of what you are writing on that particular day in that particular answer sheet. The person who is going to examine you, give you marks, is just not aware of what labor you have put in, how many hours you have studied, or what you know. He is simply going by what actually you have written there. Then he gives you marks there. So this is very important as to add on that particular day, what actually you write. I have seen many people, they know they are brilliant students, they know everything. But they are not able to score good marks in exam. They know so much that right in the first, well, they are answering the first question, they will write so much that they will end up missing some of the question later on. They will not be able to finish everything. So it, it's an exam. You must structure your everything. You spend about five, seven minutes writing the beginning, thinking how you are going to write the whole paper. Distribute your time. Collect your th thoughts. You just see that what you are going to write in that question. Attempting all the question is always very important because if you don't attempt, you get a big zero. If you attempt, there is always a finite possibility of your you getting a non-zero marks, which can be anything from zero to full marks. So it is a good idea to always attempt all the questions. So this is this is with regard to exam. Now, my friends, uh, 
you know, I, I have always felt, you know, at this point of time, I completely realize, and I, I must tell you, there is no substitute to hard labor. Absolutely, there is no substitute. If you think that if you join some poaching and if you get, uh, you know, some material or you do, there is any shortcut possible, there is no shortcut. Whatever people are saying, all these, uh, you know, uh, coachings and all that, they can only, you know, they can act as a, uh, as a kind of catalyst or kind of, uh, as a help, only when you have yourself put in that kind of a level. It can act, it can act as a enhancer of what you are doing. It can't substitute your own level. There is nothing called that you get this paper, you study and you will do the, clear the exam. It is possible that sometime you might clear because, but more often than not, you may, 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 may not be able to get anything. So, the essence is, there is no substitute to hard and sincere labor. And do that because your student life is what? I mean, this is a span of about 15, 16 years, 16, 17 years. If in these 15, 16 years, if you are really focused and if you are willing to put in hard labor, the rest of life is going to be smooth. I mean, at least in the way, there would be challenges, but uh, at least you will you 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 will be able to start your next phase of life from a pedestal from which you wanted to start. I mean you will have no repentance. So please bear uh, this in mind. Uh, there is absolutely no substitute to that kind of slogging. You know, uh, I remember when we were preparing for civil services. There were days when we never used to, you know, be seen anywhere except in the dining hall for 40-45 minutes and come back in our room and we used to just study. That was the slogging. That is important. Nobody has ever achieved anything without slogging, without working hard. So please keep that in mind. The next thing I want to tell you that always aim high. If you want to do something in life, aim high. Have a high ambition before you. But only having a high ambition may not help. So there should be commensurate effort to achieve that object, to objective. So you should be prepared to put in the amount of labor required for that ambition to achieve. It is simple equation. If you don't, if you are not prepared, you won't be able to do. So, uh, I, I would suggest all of you that always think big. Think of achieving, you know, big things and just be prepared to put in whatever it takes, whatever it requires. And I can tell you very truthfully, whatever I'm telling you, I'm very, very truthful. There is nothing you can't achieve if you are able, if you are willing to put in that amount of labor. Absolutely no chance of not achieving it. So aim high, there is no point in aiming only to be a sub-inspector or to be a supply inspector in your district or anywhere. Aim to go to the top post. And then only, even if you are not able to achieve that top, you will be somewhere which is very near to the top. You will not come down. So right from now, your aim should be to, to think big to go, go up. Now the other thing is, in life, if you want to really succeed, you should think of your competitors. Where are you competing? If you are going, your, your ambition is to achieve, suppose your ambition is to crack the civil services exam. So realistically, you will have to place yourself in a group of people all over the country who also have the same kind of ambition and dream. 
it's not important that you top your class or you top your graduation exam in a university or if you and you think that oh you have arrived and you will be able to crack that exam. No. There are many people. You are not competing with that set of people. You are competing now with a larger set of people who are scattered all over the country. Anyone in the country from anywhere can examine that exam. So think of that group and think of the ways how you can put yourself ahead of the others. So simple. It is not good enough for you to put yourself ahead of your class here, of your class later on somewhere, or score 90% marks. If someone is scoring 91%, he will get through. You would fail. Even with 90%, you will fail. So this is very important. Always think that if you want to achieve something, which is the peer group that you will be competing with, and uh, uh, how to get ahead of that peer group, how to be in the front of that group. Think of the ways. And it is easy. You will immediately understand what, what it takes to be in the front. So that is important. Competing, now the time uh, you know, uh, is coming when most of you would have to compete globally. There may not be, you know, the, all the jobs now are becoming increasingly global. There are multinational companies which are, uh, you know, opening job avenue, avenues and all. So they would not hire you, they would not take you, unless or until globally you are able to, you know, the, you appear to be a better person globally in their scheme of things. So that's why I stress Microsoft or any such company. Now what? So now I am coming to the life ahead and that's again a very important part. Now what I have realized, life ahead you can succeed and one of the very key points there is a good communication skill. You can never succeed in life ahead after the student life if you don't have a good communication, well, by communication skill, I mean not only the verbal part, but also the written communication, which is so important. In, in my job, I have always seen that normally as people go up, we don't have the patience to read anything more than a page, I'm telling you. I have uh, developed the habit that at least I try to go to the second page also. So if anyone is not able to express himself in those one page or two page, then I normally think that that problem is not very important. If it is an important problem, you should be able to express that in one page. So why I am telling you this, this communication skill, writing skill and the verbal skill is so important. You should know how to express yourself to the point while you are expressing in writing. And this will help you in exam also. You know exactly what is to be written. The most important part should straight away come. There is no beating about the bush. And this comes with practice. This comes with the collection of thoughts before you start writing. You must be very, very clear that clarity of thought should always be there as to what you want to communicate. Whatever I am telling you, I am very clear in my mind. My whole thoughts are structured. Then only it will come with clarity. If I am confused, I will confuse you further. So in writing also, you should be very, very clear what you want to finally express. That is so important. And there is no substitute to good verbal communication skill. There is absolutely no... If you ever think that... I know just because you know everything, you, you are so talented and you have now achieved here, come here, even if you have cracked the civil services exam, you will find yourself always with some kind of a complex if you are not able to express yourself. It is so true in our life everywhere. I have seen people so talented, they are not able to express because they have not practiced it. It's not, it, it does not come in a day. It's not that anyone will stand and start speaking 
you know, in a, a articulate in a very effective manner. It's not like that. You have to practice. All of us, we are very, very hesitant in speak, speaking. I, I remember in my class, I never used to ask questions to teachers because I was so hesitant. I, I thought that maybe if I ask questions, people will think that I don't know. Maybe all others are knowing. And I tell you one very secret thing. Most likely in any group of people, most people don't know. Most people don't follow actually what is being taught. So if you ask question, you will be helping others also. So they will really thank you. That are ye to ye sahi pucha hai. Ab dekhte kya jawab aata hai. Chal, hamara bhi clear ho. So never you be very right from now. You start raising questions and then trying to understand the thing, and then trying to articulate your thought. Practice it. Whenever if you are talking with your brother, if you are talking with your father, if you are talking with your mother, practice it. You just try to communicate straight away what you want to do, what you want to communicate, and it will come gradually. It will come. So this is I, I thought this is very very important for all of us to uh, uh, lay emphasis on a good good communication skill, and then in life. You know your values are very important, and I, I I stressed upon that right in the beginning. I you can live life on your terms. There will be many naysayers around you who will tell you that hey, yar, ऐसा नहीं होता है, ऐसा ही चलता है, ऐसा ही होता है. People will come up will tell you that this is the way of life. You should not forget about that. i can tell you very clearly very in a very forceful manner that the core values of life the value of honesty the value of integrity the value of compassion value of empathy everything is so important and you can live life with all these values successfully and why i am telling you this because i have seen i have during my interaction with the young probationers Uh, civil services professionals i have seen them because you know now you know they come at a very later stage they have been working with some multinational company here and there and then they crack the exam they come so they think that they are very worldly wise so their emphasis is mostly on the the material things as to when i am going to get this promotion what is the avenues here what you get when you come to the central deportation what happens how do you get a foreign posting and what is the uh, the system of impanelment what happens and you know all that kind of a thing what are the perks associated with this job with that job this is important only to a very very limited extent so earning money does not bring happiness that's the problem but people keep on pursuing everything they do in that phase of life that is with a view to earn more money and i have never seen a person who has large amount of money being happy any person who is involved in any corruption case or even if there is no corruption case and it is it's known that he has a large amount of money or large properties and all i have never seen him happy so it's very clear that money is not directly related to your happiness it does not bring happiness happiness is something else happiness is how far you are able to live life with your own principles that will bring you happiness how far you are able to help others how far you are able to you know have some compassion do something good that will bring you happiness every time you will feel good try to do good things to others you will feel good straight away so right from now children my advice would be some of you are very young some of you i can make out they are feeling sleepy also try to do something good to others in your birthday when you get some gifts it will be a good idea 
that you part away with that gift with some of the children who are very poor, deprived children. If you come across, maybe all of us see in our uh, neighborhood, there are children who don't have that kind of thing. So it would be good thing to give something. Giving is always good. So, you know, evolve that habit of giving something to others. Don't be very possessive of the things. So this is uh, the other thing. Now, finally, now you are in this school. I think that you are one of the most privileged person around. There are not many people in the country who get education in this kind of surroundings. It is no less than Netherhart. I am telling you, it is all, it's all there. The whole culture, the whole ethos, everything is rooted in that experiment. It is here. So you are, you people are extremely privileged people. Very, very fortunate people. And I know when you take admission here, there is an admission test, you have to clear that. So I presume that all of you are extremely talented people. My dear children, there is no reason as to why you should not aspire for anything and there is no reason why you should not be able to achieve that. You just have to make sure that you go there. You have to put in the requisite level, requisite effort and you are going to achieve that. This is some of the things which is very important for you as you move along is you know, be respectful, be humble. Start from tomorrow, be extremely respectful to all your teachers. I can tell you, in life, uh, there is hardly anything which is important after your parents these are your teachers, all teachers which, which you will be coming along. You know, you, uh, you know, something I have always realized that uh, if something becomes Guru Mukh, we used to tell that in later art and after that also, if some knowledge has been imparted to you through Guru Mukh, so, which is by the teachers, you know, that lasts, that lasts for long. So, the idea here is that you should try to get as far as possible in your classrooms and then work upon it. Working alone, missing the classroom at any point of life. I have seen many people in universities not going to the class because they think that it is a waste of time and they will prepare themselves sitting back home. It does not help. So it is always better if you be, are attentive in your class and listen to your teacher and then it will certainly help you if you go back home and then try to read the same chapter from your textbook. And the other point, friends, which I missed earlier is the importance of the textbook. I tell you, I know how these textbooks are written, all these NCRT or you know, the, even the other, any kind of textbook, these are invariably, invariably being written by a group of teachers who are expert in their field. Each chapter which they write, this is vetted at different stages to make sure that it is, uh, it, 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 it can be optimally learned. There is no gaps in the thoughts, in the logics and all. It's a quite a bit of hard labor. It's not easy thing. Nobody, not everyone can write a textbook. It is written in a very special manner. Exploit that. Always try to study thoroughly your textbook. If someone gives you some other kind of a book, which appears very interesting because, you know, it's so easy, there are questions and answer, uh, you know, answers, it may not help you. So there is no substitute to textbook. And then, moving from there, there is no substitute to reading good books. Why I am telling you this is any book I have realized, any book which is written, particularly some of the book who have the anti, which have the autobiographical kind of 
uh, you know, narrative. These books contain the gist of the lifetime experience of the person. Whatever he has seen in the life, whatever he has experienced in the life. And that is contained in those 100 or 200 pages. So it is such a quick, smart way to learn from a 60, 70 years of lifetime experience of the other person in that 100, 200 pages of the thing. So it's a very, very smart way. So right from now, my request to you all would be that right from tomorrow, I start reading some good books, books which can, you know, generate some thoughts, which can tell you about the life experiences of some other people. And uh, this will really stand you in good stead. So these are very important things. So uh, I, I will end here. I, I know, uh, you know, this has been a slightly longish kind of a thing. But uh, this is, uh, you know, sometimes the weakness on the part of the speaker when we see such a good group of people, it is very, you know, very difficult to stop your thoughts. So, uh, uh, thank you very much and I wish you all a very, very happy times ahead. Uh, Holi is, Holi is uh, about to take place and it is... Uh, I see it, it's not only a festival of color, it is a festival of color of course, but it is a, also a festival of fostering equality in your neighborhood with the other children. It is also a festival of showing respect to your parents. It is also a festival of showing respect to your elders. It is also a festival to you know, express your love to the other human beings. It is such a nice festival. So with that spirit, you move ahead. I wish you all the best. Trouble you for few minutes because our few students, those who have some questions, we will understand what you have done. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Shri Arvind Kumar Ji is right now holding one of the top most bureaucratic positions that can be held in the country. जैसे चीफ चीफ विजिलेंस कमिश्नर हैं, चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर हैं, चीफ इनफॉरमेशन कमिश्नर हैं, तो सर जीसीबीसी में बिजनेस कमिश्नर हैं, तो ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ एवरीबॉडी द क्वेश्चन दैट आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क सर इज हाउ कैन एन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन इन इंडिया वी नो दैट uh, we talk about lot of corruption in the country. So how can an ordinary person lodge any case in CBC, sir? So it's so easy a process. We have a portal. So the idea here is we have tried to make the whole process a very, very transparent and easy kind of a process. So you just have to type in, uh, you know, cbc.gov.in. There is a portal complaint management system we have evolved and anyone can go and lodge a complaint if you have come across where a government of India functionary or a public sector bank functionary or a public sector undertaking executive or any staff is uh, demanding bribe or indulging in corruption or not listening to your demands so you can go and put in in a gist or the complaint, you will have to identify yourself and then we do the verification. This is an OTP based verification. So you'll have to give your mobile number and we will send an OTP. You will have to fill in that OTP and that fixes your mobile number. That checks your mobile number, that fixes your address and then your complaint is accepted. And then you can monitor the progress of that complaint as to what is happening on that complaint live on that portal. So, uh, you know, if, uh, this is a very easy process. The only thing is, in commission, we don't entertain any anonymous or pseudonymous petitions. So if you are not, uh, if you are anonymous, but then we have adopted a whistleblower mechanism, which is, uh, you know, pit -pi kind of a resolution we have undertaken, where a person, if he does not want to disclose his identity, and still want to lodge a complaint, he can do it. So he can do it by writing a letter 
it has only to be in two envelopes. There should be an inside envelope and the other should be outer envelope. Outer envelope should clearly contain on the top line that this complaint is under PIDP resolution, P-I-D-P-I, protection of information disclosure and protection of uh, uh, informant scheme. So that this will you have to write. So it will come to the commission and then nobody knows except a very small cell where they black out all the names, everything and all, and then the whole thing is processed. So we have that system where by protecting the identity of the complaint in some cases, still the complaint is. So this is a easy process, anyone can. And li in life, when you go ahead, you will understand these things immediately. Yeah. yeah. What you are saying that if you are preparing for say IAS, and if you fail to get into the IAS, so what happens to you, is that? Yeah. So that's why I stressed, you know, most of these exams, it, it is not the exam which just uh, getting through it. I'll tell you, I, I cracked the civil services, but I know there were several people who were much, much smarter than me. They knew the subject much better than me. They could not crack. So that's why I told you that, you know, they were not able to perform that efficiently on that particular day in the exam during that period, you know, answering those five set of questions, which I could do, even knowing less. So that is important. But coming back to your question is, in life, that's why a clearing an exam is one part. But if you have acquired the knowledge, if you are really put in the efforts, you will not miss it. If even if you are not getting there, you will get somewhere else, which will be equally good. You, you should completely, uh, you know, remove that. Your ambition should be there. But life may, there are many occasions when you will not be able to achieve your that particular ambition. Don't get disheartened. My point is this. There is nothing in life which you don't achieve, which should make you uh, uh, disappointed. There are ways. Ultimately, also believe in destiny. That is important. So you never know your destiny will take. But only thing important is that you should prepare yourself for that. If you have that much of a skill, if you are put in, if not IAS, you will go. You will be taken by any multinational company. You will be. You will be. You will go somewhere else. There are so many avenues. So you should not. So your teacher is very correct. When he says that abhi utna mat socho, ambition fixed karo, uske liye commensurate kya lever chahiye wo dekh lo and then start doing that. Wo 99% cases mein, if you are really put in genuine lever, you will succeed. I am telling you, you will succeed. There is nothing which you can't say. So, but I want to uh, know that, so what to say to our heart so that we can continue our life now for for present time. So, so you, you should tell your heart that, you know, um, you know, it is nothing. You know, I will tell you, I have failed so many times in so many spheres that, you know, you, you have to be positive. You know, I'll tell you an example. Now, this is cool. Why I'm telling you this example? Because this is very important for you to understand. I saw the foundation stone being laid of this school. And at that point of time, there was nothing around. It was all a paddy field. Now, I knew Ramesh ji. So that's how I, my interest was there. He told me that he's now thinking of starting a school. And at that point of time, way back, you know, you know, he, I, I knew him when after Netarhat, after study, he, he became an entrepreneur. He started a Mahindra uh, kind of an outlet, a very small outlet in the bus stand. And from there, he he kept on, you know, see, the important thing which I am trying to stress, opening this school, starting this school must not have been a very easy decision. There was a finite chance, there was a good chance that he would have failed. No, after all, this big a project where you are taking a large amount of loans from the bank, 
and you know you you don't know what will be the educational ecosystem in the area what kind of a student will be coming to the school how the whole impact so why i'm telling you so this is a kind of a risk taking so life may uh, you should prepare for everything you should have ambition but you should also have that uh, you know that uh, uh, that quality of risk risk taking is not bad uh, as long as it is backed with proper planning proper thoughts and all that all of us uh, do take risk in life so आप वो उसको भूल जाइए कि मैं हार्ट को क्या बताऊंगा ये तो पॉजिटिव रहना है आपको लाइफ में आई और आई छोड़िए लाइफ में उसके आए एक बार आप आई हो जाएंगे उसके बाद भी लाइफ वी चैलेंजिंग देर विल ओकेजन वेन यू बी फेलिंग इन सो मेनी थिंग्स यू विल फेल इन समाइम इन द एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ दिटीजन एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ योर पेरेंट्स एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ योर वाइफ एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ योर Uh, you know peer group so you know there are occasions as long as you are positive well, you you will move ahead one failure will push you further towards you know another object and you will succeed so my friend please uh, you should never think of failure in that way failure is sometime a big stepping stone for success ahead all great successful people if you read their biography you will know that all of them have failed and then you know just because of persistence that's just because of their uh, you know doggedness they they persisted with their efforts and they succeeded as a mean why ki pure life koi aadmi effort karta rahe aur wo kuch nahi kar paaye wo fail as a mean hota hai i thought i have cleared your doubt yes sir thank you yes. sir let let chance to there so as you know you have talked about hard work but we have recently heard that smart work is better than hard work uh, so what do you have to say about that and how can we combine them both for a better result so so uh, yes that is very important so only working hard may not succeed unless and until you do it in a planned manner in a smart manner and every day life mein aap dekh sakte ho bahut sare log hain bahut mehnat karte hain sabhi se शाम तक बट हो सकता है उनको रिजल्ट नहीं मिले बिकॉज वो गलत ढंग से कर रहे हैं गलत चीज में कर रहे हैं राइट डायरेक्शन में नहीं कर रहे तो स्मार्टनेस तो होना चाहिए स्मार्टनेस किसी एग्जाम पे इसलिए मैंने बताया था कि नाउ क्रैकिंग द एग्जाम स्कोरिंग गुड मार्क्स इन एग्जाम मे नॉट बी डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू वट यू नो यू अंडरस्टैंड माई पॉइंट बिकॉज योर हार्ड वर्क विल गिव योर नॉलेज you have every day you have worked for 8 9 hours so you know many things you know everything <coughs> because but scoring in the exam is it also required some additional set of skills besides those you know uska nahi hoga but besides that uska skill chahiye wo skill ye chahiye ki bhai hamara assessment ho raha hai jo hum likh rahe hain copy mein to <coughs> wahan finally hum kya likh rahe hain kitna likh rahe hain जितना उसको चाहिए उतना ही लिख रहे हैं या फालतू का हम बकवास कर रहे हैं तो हमारा टाइम ही चला जा रहा है तो ऑल दीज थिंग्स कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ स्मार्टनेस बीइंग स्मार्ट सो इन लाइफ यू विल हैव टू बी स्मार्ट स्मार्टनेस इज नॉट टू वेयरिंग ए गुड ड्रेस हैविंग ए गुड हेयर स्टाइल और हैविंग फैशनेबल दिस इज नॉट स्मार्टनेस स्मार्टनेस इज योर क्लैरिटी ऑफ थॉट स्मार्टनेस इज योर you know putting optimal energy to a particular place not more not less just the right amount knowing what is the optimum energy uh, effort all these are smartness it comes gradually this was a question in my mind that first of all i have to clarify that my aim is to crack neat and there are my friends who had who are putting extra my name is arshmona jamang from class 4 and my question is what encouraged you to get on the field this what, field what encourage you to get on this field on this field oh harshwa so such a good question my in fact in my case you know there are two three things when i was in netherhart just like this you know when in my assembly one day mr trinath mishra who used to be a, a, a 
first batch was of the Iron Man. Pranath Mishra was another IPS officer. He was at that point of time, he was DIG uh, Alava. Uh, he was in charge, he had just supervised the law and order arrangements at the Kumbh Mela, which had taken place at that place. And then he had visited a school along with his family. And he was, and I was almost your age at that point of time. He was addressing us. And he was a good speaker, and he told Kriyama Saab, so that was one big motivation for me. I should be the leader of men, I should lead people, I should go ahead. That kind of a thing motivation. And then the other thing, when I was with my father earlier, when I was with I used to see young IS professionals, IPS professionals, and I used to see the reaction of the people around. People used to get scared. Now this young officer has come, now everything would be done right, all the black marketeers would be put behind bars, and all that kind of thing. So that further motivated me, yes, I should also try to emulate this. If he can do it, why can't I do it? So if you have that kind of a thing, these are, that is the idea here. I am telling you, I am much, much, these people while introducing me told many things. I am an average student. I have not, uh, but my, 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 my skill basically is, I am telling you very frankly, I, I, I focus on a thing and then I really work hard. So there are times even now on Saturday, Sunday, even on a small problem, there is nothing to do, I do, I am very fond of doing things on computer, you know, doing so many things, um, uh, writing programs and all that. So I'll keep on doing unless until I have done it completely to my satisfaction. So it is all persistence. So all of us have come up in this, come in this world with the same amount of IQ. And if we are in this school, in this set, also, all of us are fortunate. We have maybe... Experiences, whenever I am being honest to others, innocent to others, always, uh, always my friends or uh, friend circle or anyone, uh, whom I'm very close to, I have taken advantages of it. So how could you claim that it is very, uh, and uh, and it is, there's many examples that people take advantages of your innocence and humility and honesty as well. So how could you add value to this uh, honesty that it serves a huge, huge role in your life long? Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, this is Sunidhi. 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 Uh, Sumedhi, this is a difficult question. You know, the path of honesty, integrity, humility, and at times it is a difficult path. Sometimes people may take advantage of your simpleness. But you know, I am not uh, advising you to be a simpleton. I am not advising you to be not a smart person. You know, these are not contradictory terms. Being honest and, uh, and a man of integrity does not mean that he would not be smart. He has to be, he should know who, which, which are the people, how can they take advantage of this simplicity. You don't have to be, see, uh, these are honesty and all, these are the core values of life. Uska koi substitute nahi hai. इसका आपको किसी को लव करना है या नहीं करना है ये कोई पूछने वाली बात नहीं है। You have to love others। यदि कोई बताता हो कि नहीं साहब इस सिचुएशन में तो दूसरे को पीटना अच्छा है, नहीं ऐसा नहीं। वो 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 पार्ट को लेने की जरूरत नहीं है। आपको जब कोई आदमी अटैक करता है तो आप सेल्फ डिफेंस में करते हो। वो दूसरी you know, it may require sometimes that kind of thing. These are negative emotions. These are negative things. So what, that's why I was in, uh, trying to indicate better. And I'm, I'm in front of you. I'm telling you, in the path of honesty, integrity, you get everything. And uh, I mean, you normally you get paid at Aajke Din Mein, you, uh, your salary in all kind of jobs and all. It is good enough for you to live a good life, provided you should know what are your requirements. I, I may not have a big bungalow or I may not have a big house or big fancy car or you know, 
but I am happy. I get uh, good food every day, whatever I want. Just wear normal good clothes, and I am quite happy. So, and this is uh, uh, you know uh, with having my values intact on my own terms. So it will make you happy. So as a new better ki koi aapka advantage hota hai, as a new hota hai. आपको जब लगता है कोई एडवांटेज होता है तो इट इज बेटर टू गेट डिसोसिएटेड विद दैट कंपनी सराउंड योर सेल्फ विथ पीपुल हुपोर्ट यू डू नॉट सराउंड योर सेल्फ विथ पीपुल हु आर ने सेयर्स वो टेल यू कि अरे तुम नहीं कर सकते हो ये नहीं कर सकती हो ये दिक्कत है ऐसा नहीं होता डोंट सराउंड योर सेल्फ एंड दैट यू कैन चूज वट आर द काइंड ऑफ पीपुल दैट आर गोइंग टू सराउंड यू कैन चूज यू शुड बी स्मार्ट एंड अफ टू पिक अप लेकिन उस प्रॉब्लम को झेलना पड़ेगा और ऑनेस्ट बने रहना होगा अपने काम के प्रति अपने सिंसियर होना होगा अपने वर्क के प्रति वो होने होना चाहिए कष्ट है समाज ऐसा है जहां डिजोनेस्ट की संख्या बहुत ज्यादा है लेकिन उसमें ऑनेस्ट भी है लॉन्ग टर्म वेर we have stopped valuing uh, uh, assessing a person by what uh, what kind of a house he is living what kind of a car he is driving and all so there is no premium right now on being honest you should never get carried away with that always try to self understand yourself just forget about what others are saying Others sometimes say negative things about you. Sometimes they they may say many positive things about you. Don't get carried away. I have seen many people. They get carried away because everyone around them says, "Okay, you are a very fast young man. You will do this. You will do that. You will do this. You will do that. 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 it is always better to self assess you should know what is your weakness what is your positive things and how you can build upon your positives how you can take care of your drawbacks how to win over those drawbacks and then move ahead don't get carried away by what others say. so that is important uh, and the last question from uh, g to us uh, how to uh, study without being distracted by gadgets Good. <laughs> just so, see, these are so wonderful and cool. But you saw, uh, you know, even while I was speaking, there were calls coming. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the important thing is that for at least at your age, while you are studying, you should be smart enough to know how much you should use these gadgets. These are a distraction of the first order, and I have seen young people. Uh, losing their career, losing their life because they have become prison to this kind of a gadget. I have seen this kind of a thing where incessantly they are watching uh, movies on YouTube or some other thing. They are every five minutes they are checking the WhatsApp messages or other messages or mails. These are not required. So my advice to you would be that be smart. Just use it for the purpose for which, which is. it should become an aid to your performance it should not inhibit your performance whatever you want to achieve do it should aid you it should never distract you as long as distraction is concerned you just if you are not expecting any important call or important message just keep it away focus on your study if you are expecting a message you just attend to that message and forget it so unless until you are smart i am telling you particularly people of your generation will get completely overwhelmed by this technology this technology is a a double edged sword it can be of help and it can completely ruin you 
be smart enough to understand how much time you should have of a screen how much screen time thank you this is particularly important since you are going home tomorrow so you now know how to much to use your gadgets ab main mani sachi mahode aur nideshak mahode se agrah karu to arvin ji gaye the inhone aap mein ek sadharan chhatr tha यह संभव ही नहीं है क्योंकि इनके समय में कम से कम 25 से तीस हजार लड़के बिहार में एग्जामिनेशन में बैठते थे बिहार झारखंड जो कम्बाइंड था उसमें और 60 का सिलेक्शन होता था तो कितने इंटेलिजेंट होंगे इससे पता चल सकता है जो और रॉल नंबर भी इनका हमारे बैच वाला ही होगा 177 था ठीक बात तो वही वन से हमारे में सब चालू हुआ था तो हाँ तो ये हमारे ही बैच वाला रॉल नंबर लेकर ये लोग आए थे क्योंकि हम वहाँ से निकले थे और ये लोग इन किए थे इसलिए रॉल नंबर वही था तो एक तो मैं यह कहना चाहूँगा दूसरी चीज़ जो इन्होंने ईमानदारी की बात कही और हेल्प की बात कही मैंने कई बार उनसे हेल्प मांगा है और इन्होंने ना नहीं कहा है और आगे बढ़ करके उन्होंने काम किया है रिस्पॉन्ड करके हमको जवाब दिया है कि ये काम हो गया और ईमानदारी के लिए तो खैर मैं लोहा मानता हूं और अभी के समय में ऐसे ही ईमानदार अफसर को सेंट्रल के सेंटर के बड़े पोस्ट पर रखा जा रहा है जो तहे दिल से ईमानदारी का पालन करते हैं दिखावा नहीं मैं अरविंद जी को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं जो इन्होंने सुबह आगे भविष्य की बात एक चीज मैं यह कहना चाहूंगा फेल्यूर्स के मामले में फेल्यूर ही सक्सेस का रास्ता है जो फेल करते हैं वही सक्सेस भी पाती है और से कभी घबराना नहीं चाहिए जीवन में आप जा रहे हैं ठोकर लगे ही गिर पड़े किसी ने नहीं देखा तो आप उठ जाते हैं लेकिन अगर किसी ने देख लिया तो थोड़ा आपको कष्ट होता है थोड़ा दर्द होता है ये होता है तो फेल्योर से कभी जीवन में घबराइए नहीं मैं फिर अरविंद जी को कहूंगा कि आगे मैं एक बात और बताना चाहूंगा कि जब मेरा नीचे का हाउस खुला था गर्ल्स हाउस उसमें अरविंद जी आए थे तो गए थे शायद नि, निशा मेम ही जो है हाँ वही हाउस हाउस मिस्ट्रेस थी और बच्चों को इन्होंने एड्रेस किया था मैं भी साथ था बच्चे सब उस हॉल में थे और बच्चों को इन्होंने एड्रेस किया था सब वो चार फोर्थ क्लास के बच्चे थे चौथा पाँच ध्रुव हाउस था अब उसमें लड़कियां रहने लगी हैं पर पहले फोर्थ क्लास के बच्चे रहते थे और उस समय भी इनको काफी प्रचन्नता हुई थी और मैं फिर एक बार तहे दिल से इनको धन्यवाद देता हूँ आगे आने की बात करता हूँ निश्चित रूप से आपने कोई चेक करें नई नई बात बता धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर सर वट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट यूर पर्सनैलिटी इज द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ पैसा एंड कम्पेशन बोथ योर पर्सनैलिटी इज द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ Not only sympathy but empathy, both. प्यारे छात्रों में बता दू की जिस पद को सर सुशोभित कर चुके हैं आप लोगों को लगता होगा देश सरकार चलाती है लेकिन सरकार इस आंख और इस कान से काम नहीं करती है डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस ब्यूरो दो हजार उन्नीस जून दो हजार उन्नीस से तीस जून दो हजार बाईस तक थे और उसे सरकार की आंख कही जाती है और जो इनका मोटो था उसको उन्होंने जाके पूरा पूरा इन्होंने अपने जीवन में पालन किया जो जागृतम अहरनिशम इट वॉज द मोटो ऑफ इंटेलिजेंस ब्यूरो हम दिन रात जगे हुए हैं अगर आप जगे रहेंगे सतर्क रहेंगे तो निश्चित बात है हार का सामना नहीं करना पड़ेगा और सबसे बड़ी बात जीत हार की बात नहीं क्या जीत में क्या हार में किंचित नहीं भयभीत में संघर्ष पथ पर जो मिले यह भी सही वह भी सही बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर यहाँ आने के लिए अब हमारे और आज सर के भाई हम लोग आप भाई की तरफ मान करके जो बात मैंने की है कोई आपको चीफ गेस्ट नहीं माना ऐसा नहीं बहुत सारी भूल चुक हुई होगी निश्चित बात को क्षमा करेंगे और तमाम छात्रों की ओर से बारंबार आपका अभिनंदन बारंबार आपके प्रति आभार